All right, uh, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to be working on a strategy for solving story problems. So um, first of all, the strategy and then some specific examples. So uh, the first thing and uh, most important thing probably is to make sure that you read the problem. Sometimes it takes more than once, uh, one time through reading the problem to make sure that you fully understand it. Um, math uh, is a very particular subject and a lot of the words, uh, virtually all the words there are necessary. Um, so make sure that you read the problem and uh, understand uh, what it is telling you. Uh, make sure that you understand any special vocabulary. Um, then in step two, we're going to decide what you are looking for. What is the question asking you to find? Uh, typically, you want to choose the variable to be whatever that is that you are looking for. Uh, the hardest step usually is step four here, where we're translating the uh, statement of the problem into an equation. There will help you to think about what has to equal what. Remember that an equation is a statement that two things are equal. So uh, what two quantities have to equal each other? That will help guide you in forming the equation. Uh, then from here, it's downhill usually. Solve the equation using the algebra that you've learned. Uh, check your answer to the algebra, make sure that it makes sense. And then finally give your answer using a complete sentence. So um, let's see uh, how this goes. Here are some examples next. So in our first one, it says the sum of three times a number and seven is 25. That's the first sentence. And then the second sentence is find the number. Frequently in math, uh, the last sentence is the one that is telling you what it is that you need to do. Unlike English, where you have like a paragraph that starts with a topic sentence and then supporting things that follow. In math, frequently we tell you a long story and then finally ask you to do something at the end. So here we're finding the number. Which number? This number that's described in the previous sentence. So um, the next step is to choose a variable to represent the quantity we're looking for. Here it's just a number. So I'm going to let n be the number. And then uh, at this point, we want to turn this into an equation. The sum of three times the number n7. Sum means addition. Three times times is multiplication. Sum of three times the number n7 is, that's going to be where our equal sign is, um, and that's equal to 25. So the sum of, that's an addition, three times a number and seven is, that's equals 25. Okay, so there's the formation of our equation. From here, it should be pretty straightforward to solve. So we will subtract seven from both sides. We have three n is 18, so that n is six. So our number is six. Okay, and you can check and make sure that it fits uh, the question. Uh, three times six uh, is 18. And then if you add seven, you will get 25. So that sounds uh, reasonable. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, in the next uh, two examples, they involve consecutive integers. So this is some uh, particular vocabulary we'll need to pay attention to. Consecutive means one number following another. So um, 17, 18, and 19, 23, 24, and 25, those are all consecutive uh, numbers. Integers are numbers that are either positive or negative, but have no fractional part or have zero fractional part. So no decimals, no fractions. Okay, and we were to find three of them and we need the sum to be 54, so they have to add up to 54. Here we're finding three things, but it's not necessary for us to pick out three variables. And the reason why it's not necessary is that we know that the three numbers are consecutive. That is one follows the other. So for example, if you know that the smallest one is 10, let's say, and they're consecutive, then I bet you know that the next one's 11 and the next one after that is 12. So it's sufficient to know one of them. If you know one, you know all of them. So we're gonna let the variable be the smallest one. Let's let n be the smallest number. Why the smallest? It doesn't matter. You could let n be the middle number or the biggest one. It's going to change the equation, but not the uh, final answer to the problem. So that'll be the smallest number. Then I put the other quantities in the problem in terms of that one. The next one will be n plus one. And then the biggest one 
is going to be one after that or n plus two. So there are the three consecutive integers, n, n plus one, and n plus two. And we want their sum to be 54. So let's add them up. n plus n plus one plus n plus two needs to equal 50. Simplifying, we'll have three n plus three is 54. Take away three from both sides, three n will be 51. And then n is 51 divided by three. And that's going to be 17. And so our smallest number is 17. The next one is one more or 18. The one after that is 19. So we can the numbers are 17, 18, and 19. Okay, so that takes care of that example. Um, make sure that you understand uh, the steps that we followed to get this done. We read and understood the uh, question. We uh, made sense of some kind of special vocabulary, consecutive and integers. We remember that some meant in addition. Um, and then uh, labeled the thing that we're trying to find. In this case, there were three of them, but we put uh, the other two in terms of that same variable built an equation, solved an equation, and uh, summarized our answer. Okay. All right. So then in our next example, we want to find uh, it's similar. It says three consecutive even integers, and we want the sum to be 102. So this one is going to be very similar, except that we're looking for even integers. At this point, why don't you pause the video, try to set this up yourself, and see how you do with it. And then start the video, and our uh, how you did. All right, so the difference here is that on even numbers, they're not right next to each other. Uh, there's an odd number in between. So if you add 18, 20, and 22, um, 18 and 20 are separated by 19, 20 and 22 are separated by 21. So it isn't going to be n, n plus one, n plus two for these. If we let n be the smallest one, the next even number is going to be n plus two, and then the one after that is going to be n plus four because uh, they are two numbers apart. Okay, the rest of this is gonna play out really similarly to our last uh, example. Uh, we need to add the three numbers up, our smallest one, our middle one, and our biggest one. And they're supposed to add up to be 102. Okay, so then we'll solve our equation. We have 3n plus 6 is 102. Taking away the 6, 3n will be 96, so that n is 32. That's our smallest one. So our three numbers should be 32, 34, and 36. Those are the three numbers. The problems that we've been doing uh, so far are out of a broad class of numbers called uh, problems called number problems. And uh, in the next video, we're going to see more different examples involving different kinds of problems. In the meantime, let me know if you have any questions and then have a great day.